Hi, this is Bob Roth, Managing Partner and Co-Founder of Cypress Home Care Solutions. Since 1994, we have been providing in-home supportive care services for our older adult population right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Since 2014, we've been bringing you a show on Money Radio called Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. In case you miss our show that airs every Friday at noon, you can catch it right here on our podcast called Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. So when you get a chance, listen in and enjoy the show. The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Money Radio staff management, or advertisers, and do not represent an offer to buy or sell any securities. Some interviews heard on this program may be sponsored by the participants. It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions' Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock, and you, I'm your host, Bob Roth, and it must be Friday, and indeed it is. We're coming at you live from the Scottsdale Air Park Money Radio Studios, 1510 AM, 105.3 FM, and the World Wide Web, moneyradio1510.com. This is the first time you're tuning in. Our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life, and that's not by listening to me, but it's by listening to these extraordinary guests that I get to come to the show. One is a repeat guest. I haven't even dialed in to see how many times he's been here. He's played on other teams, but now he is now with the Arizona Urology Specialists, and I am really proud to have in my studio Ken Reinstein for the umpteenth time. You, you, you might even have a key to this place or something, yeah, right? Yeah, I've got a, my own parking spot out there, and uh, we're glad to be back. Well, it's good to have you back, but you, you've got a guest here with us. I, I usually do the intros, but I, I'd like you to do this intro, if you don't mind. Uh, introduce our guest that's uh, right here beside you. All right. Well, as uh, Bob said, I've been with other organizations, but for the last year and a half, I'm with Arizona Urology Specialists, and we have about 26 uh, physicians in Arizona. One of our fantastic physicians is Dr. Kamal Nagpal, and he is with us. He is uh, one of our specialists who works in the West Valley. He's been a, a urologist for about seven years and been with our organization since 2019. Um, one of the connections specifically to why we're here today and, and this month on prostate cancer Awareness Month is Dr. Nagpal is the co-director of our new Prostate Cancer Center team, which is a great new program that we're just just starting to launch right now. And it's a, a multidisciplinary team across all of our practice groups, and it's a, it's going to be a really, really cool thing. Well, it's a great thing to have you, Dr. Nagpal, here with us. And, uh, and certainly, you know, for us guys, I mean, prostate is something that we're mindful of as we age. And... Um, it's an incidence that you know, uh, cancer is, is is something that is happening to older adults. But it's it's like okay, you know, what do we do to check for it? How do we treat it? How do we do all of the above? But uh, I do want to echo something that Ken said. September is Prostate Awareness Month, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, and it's really important for us to draw awareness to this in the same way we do with breast cancer and other cancers. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Bob. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and I'm very excited uh, to talk to you about prostate cancer, especially with this uh, special uh, prostate cancer uh, awareness uh, month. As, uh, as we all know, prostate cancer is the second most common cause, uh, common cancer in men after skin cancer. Wow. And even though it is very slow growing cancer, it is the second most common of cancer death after colorectal cancer. So I'm glad we are talking about it. Well, and, and I think like anything else, I, I would imagine getting in to see your primary care physician is, is paramount. I mean, we have to go, you know, especially as we get 50 and older, we have to go at least once a year to get our routine checkup, right? It's, it's, it's a matter of getting checked up and getting screened. And how do you get screened? You can do a blood test, right? That's absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. So the great thing about prostate cancer, it is totally curable. 
you can have 100% five years survival rate if you catch it early. And, but the problem is you don't have many symptoms and signs at the early stage. So the best test to detect is a PSA, the blood test, which is, as you said, it's a screening test, which uh, primary care can do very simple in the lab. And that guides us whether the patient needs any further intervention or not. So it's very important to get that screening test uh, at early stage. Now we have certain guidelines uh, where you define which age groups you have to do. So uh, the National Cancer uh, Association, which says that we should check this patient PSA from 54, starting from age of 54. However, if you are African American or if your family history, then you have to start a little bit early at age of 45. 45. And, and you know, look, everything's by numbers, right? You know, you know they, they talk about zeros and ones, you know, in, in computer programming. But, you know, when it comes to prostate cancer, what numbers? I mean, I know the numbers are where mine are. You know, they're under one. But, I mean, where, when you get a certain number, when should you start to con be concerned and maybe come and see someone like yourself? Excellent question, Bob. That, that's a great question. So the number is dependent on the age. So if you're less than 50 years old, then even the PSA of two is, is worrisome. But if, the, if it goes above 50, above 60, the number varies. So there's no absolute number which you can say that, you know, if my number is 3.5, it's okay. If you are 50 years of age and if you're 3.5, it's high for you. So we, we take a lot of uh, uh, parameters into account by looking at it to decide whether this needs further intervention. But it generally, I would say anything above two is worrisome if the patient is less than 50. And so it depends on age. Right, right, no, that's important to know. And, and then also, you know, for us guys out there, you know, we, we go in to see our doctor and I refer to it as Dr. Jellyfinger. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that's, yeah. that's something that you, <laughs> you encounter as well and, and certainly that, that gives you the opportunity as a physician to, to not only feel it, but feel you know the texture of it, whether it's hard or soft, and and, and is that still a a um, a, a I, I was going to say treatment, but a screening technique that is being used by you all? Absolutely. So the PSA, the blood test, and the digital rectal exam. These are the two screening techniques which we still use. And uh, digital rectal exam, as the name suggests, it's a just a rectal exam. We put a small finger in the uh, in the rectum to examine the prostate, to look for any hardness, to look for any nodules. If it is smooth, then it, it's great. But if there is any nodules or anything, then it's worrisome and uh, needs further workup. No, I, I d totally understand that. So it, here it is, it's September. What we're trying to do is draw awareness to this. And Ken, um, obviously, this is something that is near and dear to your role with the company is just drawing awareness to the fact that you need to get screened. This is a preventable cancer if we just know where you're at. A absolutely, you know, and again, obviously we, you know, we work very closely with primary care offices across the valley. That's where our patients come from. Rarely do patients just walk in, uh, unless they're established, they don't just come to us directly. It's through a referral from a, phys a primary care and in an internal medicine person like that. So as you said, the most important thing is to make sure you men women everybody but you're going getting regular checkups and just staying on top of your health and paying attention and being aware of your uh, family history is the most important things and then we're able to to take care of you once once there's a need for come to come see a urologist so as we wind, wind down this first segment we got about a minute or, or less um you mentioned family history and we didn't really talk about that how how big a role does this play into whether you know what time when you get screened and whether or not you have a propensity to get this this cancer it's very critical so family history is one of the risk factors for you to have prostate cancer so if your uh, father uh, your brother anybody he has been diagnosed with prostate cancer it's uh, critical that you should start screening early and that's when we say you should start screening at 45 years of age so it's, it's very critical to know about the family history and also Apart from the family history, knowing what age that family member was diagnosed is critical as well. If that family member was diagnosed under 50 years of age, then you have to be more proactive. Y yes, most definitely. I mean, certainly on, on onset, early onset of anything is really important. But, uh, you know, I, I totally get that. And uh, I am just really glad, Ken, that you brought in Dr. 
Dr. Kamal Nagpal to really talk about this because this is very important and, and men are not really good about their health care. So this is You're a right. shout out to you men to go and get your annual physical done and make sure, I, I think it's always done in the blood work. I mean, I think every primary care physician, primary care physician tests for PSA. I agree 100% with you, Bob. You're listening to Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. I've got Arizona Urology Specialist here. I've got Ken Reinstein and Dr. Kamal Nagpal here with me. We're down one segment. we got three more to go. Stick around. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, Taking Stock in You. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602 602- Two six four eight zero zero nine. Now here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, we're in our second segment here. I've got Dr. Kamal Nagpal here with me. He is with Urology, or I'm sorry, Arizona Uro- Urology Specialist. I got Ken Reinstein here as well. And we're talking prostate cancer. Uh, it's Prostate Cancer Awareness Month in the month of September. And that first segment was really good. We teed it up very nicely. So, Dr. Nagpal, thank you very much for that. Thank Um, you. And if you missed that first segment, go up to our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button. Right below it is radio show. You'll catch this one and many, many more. So we talked about prostate cancer, and I want our listeners to know there are about 288,000, according to the computer here, 288,300 new cases every single year and almost 35,000 people die every year. And Dr. Nagba, you, you, you shared with us, it doesn't have to be that way. And screening is so important because there are really no other symptoms that you get, right? It doesn't affect your stream, doesn't affect their urgency. I mean, you know, your, your bowels are still the same. Everything's the same, it's just getting screened. Absolutely, yeah, the screening is critical. As, as mentioned, that there are not major signs and symptoms you get with this cancer. And most of the symptoms you get is at an advanced stage when the cancer is not curable. So if you wait for the symptoms, it's it's a little bit late. You can have the symptoms of blood in the urine, blood in your semen, problems in the urination, but again, it it comes at an advanced stage. If you really have to catch it early, you really have to get that PSA done, really have to get your digital vector exam by a urologist. That is critical for early diagnosis and for a great outcome. Oh, perfect. All right. So now that we know that you need to get screened and, you know, it's time now that you got diagnosed, you know, there are lots of treatment options. We talked be- between the break. I told you about a friend of mine uh, would love to know. And, and the coolest thing is today, you know, we're 2023, almost 24. Innovation, the technology is fascinating because I'm sure you're treating patients very differently than you were four or five years ago, let alone 10 years ago. So I'm excited to hear what some of the treatment options are. Absolutely. So you will be surprised to hear that the most common treatment for prostate cancer is uh, doing nothing. It's active surveillance, which means we watch these patients closely. Mm. So, and before we go into that, I will back out a little bit. And before we diagnose these cancers, we do a biopsy to diagnose these cancers. And once we get the biopsy results, there are a lot of things we see on that biopsy to find out if it is a less aggressive cancer over more aggressive cancer. For less aggressive cancer, active surveillance is a great option. And again, there are a lot of nuances to that, so you have to see a urologist to see what is the best option for you. And if you have more aggressive cancer, then we have a lot of different options. And as you mentioned, in this DNA age, we we do, uh, there's a surgical option or there's a radiation. Surgical option is basically removing the prostate gland. And now, at this, in 21st century, we have, we do uh, with a robot. And we do a robotic prostatectomy, where we make a small incisions uh, in the abdomen, go with the robot, and take the prostate out. Is that Da Vinci? That's Da Vinci, that's absolutely right, yeah. So it's it's, it's a great technology where you can see in 3D, and you can, your movements are so precise, you can preserve your nerves very well. Uh, Nerve preservation, I mean, when you do a prostatectomy, the a cut couple of critical structures which you have to be aware of. One of the nerves which uh, help in your erections. So with this Da Vinci technology, you can really very well preserve these nerves. And the rates of urinary incontinence, which happens after surgery, 
and erectile dysfunction has dramatically decreased with this technology. Wow. Absolutely. And then we have radiation option as well, which we normally give to patients who are a little bit on uh, 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 at higher, uh, at their advanced age. Uh, but there we can give photons uh, uh, radiation and which kills the cancer cells. Outcomes for radiation and surgery are almost same. So we have a thorough discussion with the patient to see what they want. And I have done my robotic fellowship uh, in that, so I offer the robotic vasectomy as well. But at the same time, we have a great uh, radiation oncologist uh, in Arizona, you a specialist. So we get the consultation uh, with them as well. And then I sit with the patient again and offer all these treatments, and we both decide what is the best option for them. You know, knowing a little bit like I do, and like many men do, I'm, I think those surgeries and even radiation procedures yesterday, um, incontinence was something that was expected. ED was expected. And you know, now to know that you can preserve those nerves and remove the gland and remove the cancer is it's fascinating. It's exciting. I mean, what a breakthrough. Yeah, it is, it is. Uh, with the robotic technology, the results have really uh, been great. And uh, nowadays, uh, uh, all my patients, they have a great outcome. The incontinence rate is significantly less, uh, and erectile dysfunction rates are also significantly less as well. So, and even with radiation, uh, I think we have uh, really made a great advancement in radiation as well, and their outcomes are much, much better than we had 10 years ago. So what is the follow-up? Because I, you know, I have a neighbor of mine that we lost years ago, and you know, I'll, I'll never forget, we were out walking right around this time when it got cooler at night and you know I asked him how he had how he was doing and he had had the surgery like five years earlier and he said well my PS num PSA numbers are this and I said how do you have PSA numbers I thought you had your prostate removed right and he goes it doesn't work to like that so I mean can you share a little bit how can you have PSA numbers even after you have that gland removed absolutely so that's a great question Bob um, so once we take the prostate out, we see the pathology when it comes back as. Sometimes you have microscopic cells which are outside the prostate gland, which are already there. Then you have to follow this patient a little bit more carefully. And also, if you have really more doubt that cancer has spread uh, within the prostate itself. So when we take out the prostate, just to go in a little bit more detail, there is a seminal vesicle structure which is behind the prostate as well. If the cancer has spread to that structure, your chance of getting the cancer back becomes a little bit higher. So sometimes you need radiation for these patients even though you have taken the cancer out. And we follow this patient very carefully. We do the PSA as well every three months to six months, depending on how aggressive the cancer was, to see whether the PSA is coming back. And yes, PSA can rise again even if you don't have cancer because you have some cancer cells which are already outside and they are now beginning to grow. So that's the way we find out if the cancer is coming back or not and they may need another treatment. So you, you get all that through the pathology. So the pathology, you send that off to a lab and, uh, and they are the ones to tell you. Absolutely. So when we take out the prostate, that goes to the lab and they tell us how aggressive was the cancer. Because sometimes when you do the biopsy and when you see the pathology, they, they are different. Wow. So yeah, so there's a 30% upgrade of the biopsy compared to pathology. So if he may have a little bit less aggressive cancer on the biopsy, 30% of the patient, the cancer may be a little bit more aggressive when you take the whole gland out because now you have more specimen to look at. And at that time also you look at the whether cancer has gone outside the capsule of the prostate or not. So that's very important to know how closely you have to follow these patients. Dr. Nagpal, I wanna tee up the next segment. We're coming up on halftime and it comes by really, really fast. And you brought a special guest here with you, and, and certainly, you know, I want our listeners to stick around for the second half. Can you describe a little bit about what our guest is going to talk about? Yeah, so uh, we have a wonderful uh, patient here, uh, Ms. Anderson, who had a prostate cancer, and uh, he uh, was under my care, and uh, we both uh, went through this together, and uh, we uh, did a biopsy for him to diagnose with the cancer, and then after a shared decision making, we both decided that surgery was the best option for him, which uh, he underwent, and uh, he had a great outcome, and uh, he wanted to come here to share his experience. So thank you very much, Mark. 
You know, I got to tell you, I, I, I loved how you phrased this. Yeah, uh, Kamal, you you talked about we, and 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 I imagine that you you're like that with every one of your patients because the journey is not just your patient's journey; it's your journey too, and you're guiding them through that journey. And and to me, as a patient, that would make me feel so much better to know that not only is my doctor my doctor, he's on my team. Absolutely, Bob. I I treat my patients as my family members. So if I'm treating Mark, he's, I treat him like my brother, my sisters. That's how I treat them. And I want to get them fully involved in the decision making. I want them to know what we are doing, and I want to decide with them because I will tell I tell them the risks and benefits of each option, and tell them what they like. So we both then sit together, and based on my expertise and based on what my patients want, we go on this journey together and fight this cancer. I love it. I absolutely love it, and and really like what you guys are doing. And and I know that you know, Ken, you're going to talk about in the fourth segment. You're going to talk about the prostate cancer program that you guys have launched, and and certainly we're going to have you step back from the mic till that fourth segment. But yep. you, do you want to tee up that? We got about thirty seconds, so that we know our listeners are going to be uh, listening in that fourth segment. Yeah, actually, uh, I briefly touched on it, but uh, we're right now in the kind of the infant stages of putting together. We've, we've put it together, but we haven't fully launched it yet. But we have a full um, multidisciplinary team of our providers, both our doctors and our nurse practitioners and, and uh, physician assistants. In addition to pathology, we have our own internal pathology and we have our own internal pro- uh, rad- radiation oncologist. So we, we wow. can co- so come at it from all sides and it's all part of our Arizona Urology, fa- uh, Arizona Urology Specialist family. So uh, yeah, we have a great team of about 10 folks from across the valley, from our mo- many clinics across the Phoenix metro area. And uh, they're working together to just streamline the the process of treating our our patients with prostate cancer love it absolutely love it well we're at halftime here dr nagpal i can't thank you enough for bringing such an important topic to our show and mr mark anderson we're looking forward to talking to you in that second seg our second half you listen to health futures taking stock in you i'm your host bob roth we're at halftime here at health futures stick around we'll be right back I hope you're enjoying the show. This is your host, Bob Roth, managing partner and co-founder of Cypress Home Care Solutions. If you have any questions about the topics that are discussed during the show, visit us online at cypresshomecare.com or give us a call at 602-264-8009. We are entering now the second half of our show, so stay tuned for more helpful information to assist you with your aging loved ones. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. And I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, I have got... uh, Arizona urology specialist here in the studio. I got Dr. Kamal Nagpal, and I've got Ken Reinstein, and I've got a special guest here that Dr. Nagpal brought in, uh, Mr. Mark Anderson. So, Mr. Mark Anderson, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. It's good to have you here. And, and Dr. Nagpal, I'm going to have you tee this up because he's your guest, he's your patient. And he's my guest here in the studio, but there's no one better to introduce him than yourself. So sure. please. Yeah. First of all, I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Anderson to join the show, especially at uh, our excited month of uh, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, so Bob, uh, the Mark has been uh, with me for last one and a half years, I think, Mark. And initially he came to me because uh, of his uh, high PSA abnormal PSA level, what we were talking about. Right. right. So Mark was very smart and he's very health conscious and that's why he went to his primary care, I think, and they, they did a, uh, his PSA and it was a bit abnormal. And that's how we, s- we s- uh, met and we started the journey. So, and uh, after seeing that PSA, um, first step we always do is to repeat that blood s- test again to make sure it's a correct value or not. And uh, if I recall correctly, it was still persistently high. 
and then Mav can G be Can you give us an idea of what, what is high? I mean, because you said it's different for people I in different age groups. So. Absolutely. So Mark uh, is uh, 67, right? 68. So you look great, by the way, Mark. <laughs> Whatever yeah, you're doing, you. he, does. <laughs> he doesn't get all the credit for that. I know your <laughs> genetics and you're probably working hard for that. Yeah. So uh, for Mark's uh, age, the PSA should be less than 4.5. Less than 4.5. Yeah. Got it. But then, Bob, it's a little bit more complex than a uh, total PSA. There is a couple of uh, things we look at the PSA as well. The total PSA and there's a free percentage PSA as well. So uh, d I don't want to um, make it more complex, but these two components let us decide. So it's not just one number as well. There are two, three things we look at. And Mark PSA uh, was a bit abnormal. So after talking to Mark, uh, we uh, decided that we should have to do a biopsy. And I think we got an MRI as well, if I recall. Uh, and then we did a biopsy, uh, and then uh, we found uh, the cancer. And uh, Mark, and then we again had a long discussion. Uh, so all my patients, when I do biopsy with them, my follow-up after the biopsy is almost 45 minutes to an hour because that is a critical time when I have to break the news mm. and I have to tell them all about the cancer, uh, going to the pathologies and treatment options. So it takes a lot of time. So I said, uh, we, we sat together and then Mark's uh, wonderful wife was also there and we all decided after uh, discussing all the options, what is the best option for uh, Mark? And then we decided to go ahead with the surgery. And I will let Mark talk after that. Well, I, I do want, Mark, if you could tee this up, because, I mean, obviously painting a picture is really what we tried to do here on the show. And and I'd, I'd love to get, you know, maybe the emotions that you were feeling b when, you know, Dr. Nagpal shared this with you. And, you know, obviously for any of us to get this kind of news has got to be, you know, it, it's got to hit you right in the heart and, 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 and sink right down to your stomach. Um, share with us that, that feeling and, and then... You know, he talked about the journey being we, and I love that about you, Dr. Nagpal. I mean, you Thank know, you. it's not just you going through the journey, but you guys are going through it together. And if you would, please share that as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, everybody thinks about what if they, what if they get cancer? You know, am I going to get it or am I just imagining stuff? And, you know, I felt fine, and I've had normal well checks all the way from when I was 45 up to now, and, and PSA was always, of course, one of them, and my PSA was always low. And... You know, once I reached my mid 60s, it started elevating a little bit. By the but way, just real quick, family history at all? Uh, dad uh, passed from colon cancer. Okay, so would, that wouldn't qualify, would it? No, the single uh, family member with colon cancer generally doesn't put you at a high risk. Uh, the breast cancer is one which can. If you have a family member with a breast cancer, that puts you at That's high risk. That's that BRCA gene. Exactly. Got it. got it. Got it. Please carry on. So it was right. It was right around 2.8 to 3.0 and. For my age group, if you were going to do Google that on WebMD or something, you would find out for my age that was low. But like Dr. Nagpal said, everybody's different. And for me, <clears throat> that was high for me because my PSA was low for so long. And so once we determined that I was definitely a candidate for prostate cancer, we did a – Dr. Nagpal or recommended a test called 4K. Remember that? Yeah. And that comes back with a – gives you a percentage of how likely you are to be diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer so it comes back with a number and mine was at 12 percent and I'm thinking well that's a good number that's not bad I'll take that number any day yeah it doesn't work that way 12 percent is actually you're already in the high mid caution zone that you're you're basically I had it I wow. basically had it yeah, so yeah. at that point and that also correct me if I'm wrong anytime it qualifies you to get a prostate biopsy that way there's no no monitor or anything you, you got to go in there and see what's going on so I did that and it didn't look good and then the next step was to get a complete body scan and that itself is stressful oh yeah because now you're thinking well I've been walking around this earth since for 65 years there could be all kinds of things wrong and I'm waiting for Dr. Nagpal in the office and he comes in with a pad of paper about an inch thick I'm like holy crap this is bad news yeah, this this could be bad and, yeah. and it was great that was the only thing I had going so right thank at, God at that point and then he, he he gave me an option to go see you know a radiation doctor and kind of get a second opinion 
I wasn't in there for more than about 15 minutes and realized that this wasn't for me. And also in the back of my head, Dr. Nagpal said, radiation's good, but if the cancer comes back, we can't do surgery. It's very difficult to do wow, surgery. Wow, did not know that. So I felt like, let's make a deal. Do I take door number one or go with door <laughs> number two? <laughs> right. And I, I, I was on, you know, taking Dr. Nagpal's advice the whole time. And, and so after that, I was just waiting on a surgery date. And back to what you said about being worried, I was never really worried because the first thing Dr. Nagpal said to me was, I asked him, I said, well, should I be, should I be nervous? He goes, don't be nervous, whatever it is, we'll fix. I love that. And, and we just stuck with that the whole time. So to give us a, a reference for timing on this, this was in 2021, right? September 2021. Yeah, and you know, we're still in COVID. Yeah. And, and that had to be pretty scary it too. It was because I was so worried about you know, and, and where I work, there's a lot of, lot of people and I was worried about getting COVID and knock on wood, I didn't. And, and I had to get it, actually my uh, surgery wasn't scheduled until February of 22, but I was thinking all this time, am I gonna get delayed? I'm gonna get delayed and I right. feel like I have a time bomb inside of me. Right, the t clock is ticking. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. And it all worked out. I had, I got a COVID test the last, I think a week before I was scheduled for surgery, it came back you know, negative, and so I was good to go for the surgery. So February was the surgery. Yes. Can you take us through the journey and, and w what what happened? You know, the surgery, follow up, uh, uh, side effects. Uh, the surgery was all the prep, everything normal prep for surgery. You know, you know how that goes. Did the, you meet Da Vinci? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that thing, that thing's awesome. I had I had six holes in my abdomen, and it six felt, holes. That's yeah, it. After the surgery. I felt like I'd been kicked in the stomach by a horse. I mean, you know, and it's like, it hurt like, it hurt bad, you know, but you know, it, I knew what it was from, so. Right. So. Sneezing uh, and coughing oh was God, not or good. Or laughing, it, watching something funny on TV, oh forget yeah. it. Yeah, so after that, the worst part about the recovery was a catheter. I had a catheter for 12 days and. Foley? Yeah. Yeah, I had one of those. They're not fine. <laughs> so, you know, and the biggest thing with that is, is you were just worried about hitting, like, like I have three golden retrievers and they're excited and I was worried <laughs> about one of them jumping on me and yanking that thing out. And, uh, but everything worked out and I have to give a shout out to my wife who's a, an RN. So it, it really helped oh, with home care. Yeah, it did. Yeah, a lot, a lot of help with home care. She was awesome and got me through the, uh, the recovery. And uh, then it was just, it's been follow up since then. And, I'm on a six month surveillance right now, like what you were talking about with PSA, that's, that's the surveillance. And uh, the big thing is, it's, you get nervous. You get nervous when you're waiting for that lab result to get right. your email. I'm like, do I click on it, do I click on it? And, and it's been, the number's been the same since the, the day I got my surgery. So he still gets a PSA number. It's, yep. a, it's, it's a number that you monitor, but I, is it back to what it used to be, or is oh, it? Oh, it's zero. It's zero. Yeah. Okay. It's absolutely yeah. zero. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And and we're getting ready to wind down the, this last segment. Side effects that we talked about: incontinence, ED. Um, did you have them? Did you have them for long? You feel like you're you're back to full in the strength? beginning. In the beginning, I had them. I I was worried about you know going to work. Uh, I was worried about. You know that kind of stuff but you know you wear your the uh, the pens and you know that last I, I did that for like two weeks that's it and after that i was good oh so mark thank you oh you're welcome thank mark. you for sharing Appreciate your story it. i mean it's so important for our listeners to hear this especially during prostate cancer awareness month dr nagpal thir three down we got one more to go you've been listening to health futures taking stock in you Stick around. We're talking about Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now. Here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. I'm your host, Bob Roth. And if you're just tuning in, we're in our fourth segment. We've got Arizona urology specialists here. We've got Dr. Kamal Nagpal, who has been here talking about prostate aware, cancer awareness month. 
And we also have Ken Reinstein here in the studio with me. He's an old friend who's been here many, many times. He's wearing this really cool blue shirt. I'm going to have to work on, how do I get that Under Armour shirt? Uh, we, we can work on getting you one. All right. I'm about to place a new order. <laughs> Perfect. So we talked about some of the things that you guys are doing. And, you know, I love the fact that you're keeping it all in-house, right? So, you know, you're doing radiation. You're doing all, all these things. You have these specialties in-house. You're not letting patients go. And, and certainly you kind of teased it already, but I want you to talk a little bit about the prostate cancer program that you guys are running and it's so important i i would imagine you may be one of the few or if only ones that are doing it here in the valley i cannot speak definitively to that but i'm pretty sure we have the the sort of the depth and breadth unlike anybody else i'll give you a quick snapshot on arizona urology specialists here in phoenix we have seven clinics across the valley although we are going to do con some consolidation in the west valley starting in november we have three ambulatory surgery centers two prostate cancer centers uh, we have a, a future um, interventional radiology center opening up. We, and then across the valley, we have 26 physicians and uh, 15 advanced practice providers, which are nurse practitioners and, and physician assistants. But in addition to that, we have our own radio. We have our two radiation oncologists on our team. We have our own pathology lab based here in Phoenix. So we really do kind of cover it all. And it, it's intentional. We want to be able to take care of everybody cover everything and not have to ship it out and you, every time you ship things out there's delays and such so the more we can do in-house and the more coordinated our care is it's fantastic which leads us to the personalized prostate cancer program that we have just created as a matter of fact this is so fresh next week is when we are actually rolling it out internally to our wow. entire staff so Monday is when we're really starting so that's how, how current and new this is and uh, it's built on the expertise of a dedicated group of clinicians with extensive education and years of hands-on experience in treating prostate cancer. Uh, they understand the physical and emotional challenges that every patient faces. And you kind of, you know, Dr. Nagpal talked about that being, we, we take everything very seriously and our, our doctors really take a very personalized approach. It's not just next, it's not just patient number seven, it's, it's someone they know and care for. We. Um, yeah, it's a we. It's we, it's um, not me, it's we. So, you know, it's a really comprehensive approach. It's from, from the initial screening through the diagnosis and all the way to the to treatment. And, and as I mentioned briefly earlier, uh, Dr. Nagpal, along with uh, Dr. Bernard Gerberic, are the two leaders of our program here in the Phoenix area. Well, I tell you what, you, he's such a slacker. I mean, he's not only an MD, but he, he's got a PhD, <laughs> too. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, I really am. I mean, you guys are doing such great work here in the valley and and we talked about innovation and and i you know i would love to turn to you uh dr nagpal because i know you're not only a doctor but you're also a student and you know do you know of some of the stuff that's going on that we are on the verge of seeing down the road i mean you know i, I i'm assuming there are clinical trials that maybe you're doing or following uh as it relates to prostate work and prostate cancer yeah, absolutely. So there has been so many advances which has happened in prostate cancer field in the last 10 years. We have come out with so many medications, chemotherapy, immunotherapy. In the last couple of decades, the management of advanced prostate cancer has dramatically changed and improved. And also with localized prostate cancer, this Da Vinci robotic prostatectomy, that's a huge leap. And now, uh, uh, I can divide in two phases. For let's talk about the localized cancer in which we have talked about the surgery. So we have uh, the new robot, uh, Da Vinci robot, where it's a single port instead of, as Mark had six holes, now there's a single port robot which is single. out there. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think... Uh, I don't Mark, you should have waited. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing with that is obviously that hole is a bit bigger. Yeah. So your chance of getting the hernia is a bit higher compared to the what Mark had. Um, so that's a new uh, development. And I think Honor Health, they are trying to get that robot as well. Um, and then in terms of advanced prostate cancer, we have come out with so many medications uh, over the last 10 years that it's hugely change the outcome of these patients. So we have a lot of patients who advance prostate cancer, which means the cancer which has gone out of the prostate into your bones or in your lymph nodes. Right. So with this new advancement, I have patients whose PSA is zero. Uh, so they have in remission. I love that. So it's, it's, it's excellent. 
my my neighbor was a great guy and you know unfortunately a lot of that stuff wasn't around back then and you know he was going to md anderson and he fought the good fight for about seven years so just a couple things uh, you know we're talking this show's about older adults and certainly incontinence is something that happens to some older adults um, when urinating the stream you know doesn't isn't as steady you know it may be weaker are, are these signs that we should be looking for are they normal aging signs I, as we conclude i would love for you to share with our audience if you're listening and you're having frequency of going incontinence or maybe your stream isn't as strong as it used to be what should we be doing so most of the time the symptoms which you mentioned bob they are signs of uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia which is a enlargement of the prostate and not from the cancer just from the benign glands um, saying that we still want to check your PSA because as I mentioned until you check a PSA you will not know if you have prostate cancer or not because these symptoms can be due to prostate cancer but not likely uh, but whenever we see these patients you have to do the PSA as well and the, if you have this benign enlargement the treatment of that is totally different but if you have this symptom, you have to check with your urologist uh, to get a complete workup and get the treatment as needed. And the treatments mostly are pharmacological, right? Yeah, you, it doesn't really involve surgery. I, I, I see the commercials on television. And I know our listeners see that too. Well, so it depends on, again, this is a complete workup we need to do. Right. If your symptoms are a little bit severe and if your test shows that you're not emptying your bladder, then medication doesn't work very well. Although we try with medications first, but uh, the problem with medication is sometimes they stop working after a couple of years and then they have side effects as well. Mm. And if you have a severe enlargement, then they don't work very well. So even though we have surgical options, nowadays we have a lot of a minimal invasive option, like a uvulift procedure, which we are center of excellence for, which is minimal invasive surgery, like robotic surgery. So I want to tell uh, the listeners that don't be afraid of this. Come and see your urologist. And we have a lot of various options. It's not surgical. It's a very least invasive surgical procedure, which, which takes five minutes to do as well without any incisions. Nice. So we have about 30 seconds. Any questions I haven't asked? Any lasting thoughts or, or, or tips you may want to give our listeners? Sure, yeah. So check your PSA. Get to your doctor. Make sure your PSA is checked. We as a urologist at Arizona, urology specialists are there to help you. Our goal is very simple, to treat and heal. And nobody at Arizona Urology Specialist will stop until we treat our patients and cure them or put them in remission. And we want to make that prostate cancer from the second most common death to the 50th most common death in our community and then go to national level. I, I love that. How do, how do people get a hold of the Arizona Urology Specialist? Yeah. Of course, uh, one of the best ways is ArizonaUrologySpecialist.com. And you can find our information there. I do want to mention, I'd be remiss without saying part of our new program is we have a prostate cancer navigator. She's brand new to our team, and she is Ooh, phenomenal. I love that. And just, just, just directs and guides everyone through the process. Kind of like the Julie McCoy of the Love Boat, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There she even go. looks a little bit like you. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. Dr. Nagpal, thank you. Ken Reinstein, great to see you again. Mark Anderson, thank you for coming into the studio. Make it a great day. We'll be back next Friday. Thank you very much, Bob. Thanks for having us. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM.